Greetings, everybody. This is Morning Eggnog. My name is James Font, and with me, I have Caleb Font. Good morning, everybody. He's back from Kansas. I'm back from Kansas. I survived He's, the tornadoes. He survived all the tornadoes. He helped Dorothy along her journey to see the, the wizard. And, no, uh, no. She just went on her own. She's oh, she just, phew, up. I was like, hey, remember, I avoided the tornadoes, so true, I was like, true, true. sorry, sorry, Dorothy. You're just, you're just in trouble. But you took care of Toto, right? No, Toto went with her. Oh, yeah. Have you never watched The Wizard of Oz? I have. I was trying to pl- make a play on words. Not play on words, but like a, a story out of it. And you just shut it down. I shut that down. No Dorothy and Toto in this story. So today's podcast, we're going to be testing four different kinds of eggnog. And coffee. And... Well, I'm, I'm trying... He's to... testing coffee. Uh, uh, this week, we have uh, Death Wish Coffee. Death Wish Coffee. Quote, unquote, the, the most caffeinated coffee in the world. Oh, this is just going to be absolutely fantastic. And it, and so if you see a Heron's truck flying by at about 1,000 <laughs> miles an hour, just, just ignore it. Um, please do not call my boss. So here we go. It's it's okay. It's not it's, – it's bitter. It is, really. It's it's pretty bitter. I'm, I'm, I'm a smooth coffee guy, so – I think we put too much coffee in it because it's not supposed to be this bitter. Cool. And I actually took quite a bit out. Back out, yeah. This is, I think I think this I there's there's actually a percentage of how much bean how many beans you should use per cup. Of coffee. So we really are going to die because there's that skull. No, we'll be fine. No, I don't know. I think Silas said this has sixteen hundred milligrams of caffeine. No, nine hundred. I don't remember. Yeah, sixteen hundred milligrams of caffeine, whereas a regular cup of coffee has ninety. <laughs> I want to go back to my regular coffee. <laughs> okay. so, so so the uh, <clears throat> the eggnog we're trying today. Oh, yes. Eggnog. We're trying the Southern Comfort Vanilla Spice, which is my personal favorite. All right. We have something my parents got me. Is it Delore? Deluxe. <clears throat> <laughs> or is it Delu? Because CF, it's French. CF Burger. Creamery. Whatever. Anyways, it's it's an old-fashioned eggnog. Ooh. Then uh, I made a, a bad life decision and wanted to try the Silk Soy Nog. No, it's just Silk Nog. Well, no, if you read it, it says soy nog, but anyways. Oh, that's, I know. Made, I'm just reading, milk. reading the original, and or then, reading the front page here. The the good stuff, according to Caleb. It's, it's my personal favorite. Is uh, uh, There's a dairy just outside of um, uh, Manhattan, Kansas, and uh, it's called Hildebrand, and they make all kinds of uh, different milk products. Um, so the one I brought today was their eggnog that they uh, only, uh, I think this is the ninth edition from 2000, it says 2017. I don't know why it says that. So it's really old, folks. No, it's not. A whole year old. And then our second topic for today is uh, short. Is it? Yeah, fruitcake. Yeah, fruitcake. And how terrible it is. And why? Why would you ever eat fruitcake? I have no idea why you would eat fruitcake. I I don't. I personally have never really had fruitcake, so that might be something Neither we have. have to, you know, so that might be something we have to have. You know, bring in. Why are you starting with that instead of the the junk? Uh, he's pouring eggnog right now. Well, there's not much left. Oh, okay. I don't know why that means anything. I, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. I would, I personally would have started with the crud, and, and worked our way up. No offense, you know, silk. But uh, I'm just not a soy guy. It's just like eating a vague a vegan a vegan burger. <laughs> a vegan burger. It's vague. It's a vague burger. All right, so we're trying the Southern Comfort Vanilla Spice. Okay. Very sweet. Very creamy. It has a very good aftertaste. Yeah, it's a good warming, good warming taste. I like that. Um, nice and smooth. Well, it's eggnog, so. Well, you'll find out that that's not true for all eggnog. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> oh, no. oh, this this ought to be good. Yeah, and we're now wiping out our cups, so that way we're not spoiling. We're the cleaning taste. our palate. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We got coffee. We can sniff coffee, so yeah. that way, um, that way we're not ruining our. I'm already palate. feeling excited. Because of the coffee. Because of the coffee. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> all right. First of all, uh, the <laughs> the consistency of the silk nog uh, is very watery. Oh, that alone just sounds bad. Okay, so I'm going to watch him pour it out of the cup. I'm, I'm, I'm a little disturbed by his... Yeah, I kind of need to move my mic, too. So. Are you ready for this? <laughs> yep, go for it. Oh, okay, that... Just is why did you put so much? Why? (laughs) Why would you put that much in? (laughs) Just looks. 
It kind of super watery. It kind of looks super gross. Like somebody mixed orange juice and milk creamer. <laughs> not even creamer because it's not thick enough. Smell it. See what it smells like. It smells kind of like eggnog. It's got a little spice spice smell to it. So here we go. Oh. Okay, so it's not oh. awful. It's like water. It, it's not thick at all. Um, if you absolutely could not drink <laughs> milk, of, <laughs> milk any kind. of any kind, this would be a adequate substitute. Yes, we'll go with adequate. Adequate. I, I, we haven't thrown up yet, so so it. it uh, my mom got me some from somewhere, and it looked when I, I I had to throw it out. It was so gross. Oh my! It looked like egg yolks when I poured it out. Oh, so was it like somebody made it themselves raw? No, it was from a store. It just was not good. Oh, it's been, it's been there a while. So this is the CF Burger, Burger Creamery. They've been uh, doing this since 1926. Yeah, we'll be we'll be putting posting pictures of the uh, the cases so that way everybody can see what we're drinking here. This looks like a traditional eggnog, and it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks nice and creamy. Has a nice color to it. I added way too much. Yep. Yeah, he he likes to he likes to really make us test it thoroughly. Okay, it's not horrible, but I really don't like the flavor of it. Yeah, it's not. It's almost like it doesn't have enough spice to go with the cream. This is a great audio podcast. Yeah, yeah, you can hear us chugging down. I keep smacking my stuff. Yeah, not, I, I would actually say the. Uh... It's not bad. I I like it. But not as much as the Southern Comfort. Yeah, the Southern Comfort definitely had a better, better, better taste to it. I'm gonna let Caleb pour this because uh, I don't want to spill anything. It's in a nice glass bottle. Yeah, actually, Hildebrand makes some really interesting different um, uh, drinks. Uh, so they make an excellent milk chocolate, which is ridiculously milky or chocolatey, chocolatey. Yeah, it has a lot of chocolate in it. And then, um, oh my goodness, that looks so good. Yeah. So my favorite, though, or the I shouldn't say my favorite. The most interesting one they make is a root beer float. Oh, that is weird. So they it, it does taste like a root beer float, except the root beer is a little flat. Oh, I gave you a little more. That's okay. I need to try this thoroughly. Okay. So we're gonna give this one. Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Is that a half gallon? Yeah, it's a half gallon. So you nice. can already see my wife and I have started started drinking on it. Smells very creamy. It, it is. Ready? Oh, I like that. Yeah, smooth, but it still has the nice nice taste to it. Vanilla? Would... Hmm. <laughs> Never mind. Vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Remy. The Southern Comfort, in my opinion, is the best because it's it's. it's it has a better aftertaste. Yes, it does. This tastes like eggnog, like the traditional eggnog taste, and I I didn't like that about eggnog. Mm-hmm. This is very good. The after, like the after aftertaste, is really good. Like right now, I have, that's fantastic. Yeah, I would say the Southern Comfort has a better spice. Yes, to a it. better spice to it. Where this this is very this is much creamier even than the Southern Spice because yeah. it's actually from. It's and every time I say Southern Comfort to someone because I didn't know that was a whiskey <laughs> before the and so I got Southern Comfort and I'm like yeah and they're like does it have Southern Comfort in it and I was like no <laughs> nope doesn't yeah all the all the eggnogs we have drank excuse me do not have alcohol in them no because it's six in the morning we both have to go to our jobs exactly and we both drive for a living so yeah well six forty one but anyways. Yeah, that's besides the point. Uh, interesting fact about eggnog is uh, actually one of our founding fathers loved eggnog. Founding fathers. Which one? <laughs> Which one? Should I leave this as a question or should we just talk about it? Let's leave that as a question. I okay. Like that. So don't look it up, people. Just just guess. Which founding father loved eggnog? And then and then we'll touch on it next uh, next ne- next podcast because it's actually pretty interesting, really. Yeah, I've always I've always liked eggnog, and uh, a lot of my friends 
did not like eggnog. Uh huh. But mostly because they'd never tried it. Oh, really? Yeah. They're just just naturally against. They're just it. like eh, it sounds gross. So I got them Southern Comfort, <laughs> and uh, now they they like that eggnog. Very nice. Yeah. So I mean, eggnog is is good. Um, it's different. It packs on the pounds. It do- oh yeah. If you want a drink that makes you fat, so uh, Cody, if you're out there, you can drink some eggnog. You should friend. drink a lot of eggnog. Drink a lot of eggnog. That would help you, buddy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's good. I would say once a year is about, about right. And then, then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Caleb made the, the death by coffee a little strong. So our second topic is about the secret history of fruitcake. Fruitcake. Every Christmas it shows up. People bring fruitcake as gifts. They make jokes about it and sometimes they even eat it. But love it or hate it, fruitcake never goes away. And there's a story. What's the story behind this sturdy <laughs> Why are you reading dessert? it directly from the, the page? Because it's fun. <laughs> What's in it? I don't know. Absolute garbage is what it looks like. <laughs> it basically, they were like, what do we have around the house? Hey, look, we have some... Did they make this in the 1920s? Uh, it, this started back in Roman times when they started making fruitcake. Okay, fine. So fruitcake is, you know, there's actually recipes for it's fruit. like It's like the souse of desserts. The what? Souse. I have no idea what that is. I will look at you up. I will look up a picture of souse. But anyways, so the, so again, the fruitcake has been around since m- before medieval times. And uh, a couple interesting facts about fruitcake is one, you know, everybody knows it's got alcohol in it. But the reason, well, some people put alcohol in it. My, my aunt likes to put alcohol in it rum yeah but the thing about fruitcake is is if you put alcohol in it it helps keep the bacteria from growing which destroys the fruitcake over time so there's two things you can do to to preserve fruitcake one you can have alcohol in it or wrap it in a cloth that has alcohol this is souse souse is a chopped up meat and pick you can add a bunch of stuff to it but it's like chopped up meat and they put it in a loaf and then they they and then my father dan font eats it it looks like they add like pig fat to to like make it gelatinous. Gelatinous. That is a great word, because that's what it looks like. It looks oh, like a gelatinous so hot mess. Yeah, just look up souse. Souse. It's so gross. Anyways, fruitcake. Anyway, so fruitcake. Yeah. So, um, fruitcake can be preserved for very very long periods of time and still eaten. So there is known cases where uh, people say that you can have your fruitcake for twenty five years and still eat it. Interesting. Yeah. Um, it has the same density as mahogany wood. What? Yes, one for one. So if you take a fruitcake and you take mahogany wood, it's got the same density. <laughs> and you eat it. And you can eat it. And it's special. Have you ever had fruitcake? I a traditional fruitcake. Don't think so. I don't I'm pretty sure I have never really have willed myself to eat a fruitcake. That sounds horrible. Because our family has never really made fruitcake. We should we should make fruit cake this year. Oh, okay. We should, should have our wives make fruit cake this year. <laughs> we should have the women make the fruit cake. <laughs> or or that could be a podcast. Caleb and I are making fruit cake. Oh my gosh. Our first video podcast. <laughs> It'd be like nailed it the TV show. Pretty much a fruit cake. I don't know if you can mess up though, can you? <laughs> I think it's possible. So Oh my gosh. What other facts do you have about fruit cake for us? Um, but anyways, so the royal family, right? Okay. England. Yep. For years, their main cake for the royal family when they get married was fruit cake. That'd so, be a really disappointing wedding gift. I well, I don't know. You know, you think back in the nineteen, you know, seventeen hundreds and eighteen hundreds, fruit cake, right? And that was. I mean, I guess. I mean, yeah, fruit cake. Why not? <laughs> You but, sound really enthusiastic about it, Caleb. <laughs> well, if you if you ever seen a picture of fruitcake, it just doesn't look. It looks literally like what Caleb said earlier. What do we have in the kitchen? Ass, put it in the cake. Exactly. Also, dump some alcohol in it. <laughs> Pretty much, it's like, no, oh, this taste is okay. I want to get drunk off cake. <laughs> <laughs> Let's add some rum. Yeah, I think pirates were the first ones to make it. Oh, really? No, that was totally made up because people add rum to it. So True. you know. Pirates, rum. Why is always the rum gone? <laughs> exactly, because it's in the cake. 
Just eat bunches of cake and you'll get totally wasted. Uh, that is a possibility, but I think when you cook it, it takes out... Shh. Okay, I'll stop. You're 100% right, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, I also have some... I also I had just some great facts about eggnog, too. That... All right, good. what are some... Tell me three facts about eggnog. Okay, first, spiked eggnog was the idea born from Colonel America. Imagine that. Uh, it was originally invented in England, but when it came over here and we started making it, we decided to spike it. We were very depressed over here with our all our children dying of early ages. Exactly. Um, it was mainly made, uh, mixed with uh, Caribbean rum, because mm -hmm. it was the least taxed spirit. So that's why. Anytime you have a spirit, it's always scary. <laughs> spirit. Spirits are way worse than like a whiskey or a or a, I don't know, a vodka. <laughs> I guess a vodka is a spirit. It's like, well, do you want to drink this or mix your paint with it? Pretty much. <laughs> so another interesting fact about eggnog. Eggnog was often recommended to treat diseases such as malaria. So that was... So if you have malaria, drink a butt ton of eggnog. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you could go to a modern day doctor and you'd be probably okay, but... Yeah. You know. All right, here's here's one that's kind of gross. Or just stay away from mosquitoes. Americans consume more than 135 million pounds of eggnog each year. That is disturbing. <laughs> that well, is so much eggnog. How many elephants is that? Why do you ask what? Do you have an answer? Of course not. I just ask random things. Caleb, you gotta have answers to stuff. How much does it? How much does an elephant weigh? We must know these questions. They are important. How much does an adult male elephant weigh? Google. Here's a summary from Wonderopolis. Asian elephants can weigh between 5,000 and 11,000 pounds. So 11,000 pounds. Let's do the, the higher end. So how many millions of pounds? 135 million. 135 million. Million. Divided by... 11,000. Yeah, we'll make it a big elephant. It's 12,000 elephants. <laughs> 12,272.7272. Oh my goodness. So you got to cut, cut you got to cut one elephant in like several pieces. A couple pieces. Disgusting, but doable. If I did my math right, that should be right. So 12,000 elephants, that's how much egg eggnog is the equivalent to the amount the of equivalent. eggnog. In pounds. We could just add equivalents to everything. How many whales is that? At least six. <laughs> it's at least six whales. <laughs> and if you go with the blue whale, it's about four and a half. There we go. Yeah. Those are numbers out of our butt. We don't know. We have no clue what we're talking Why about Why would we there. look that up? <laughs> Things aren't... We just would rather make up random facts and then anything else. It's just more fun. So, Caleb, you, got, you went to Kansas for Thanksgiving. Giving ish, it was more of a Christmas. That's it, what I was gonna say. I yeah. think it was more. It was Thanksgiving, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. So uh, how was that? It was an absolute blast. Uh, the main reason we went is to to hunt. Um, my family. Why don't you hunt here? Um, because my family here is not big hunters. <clears throat> True. And as such, we don't. You know. We Therefore, just, you don't have all the material you need. Exactly. We don't. We do have guns, but we're not. We're just not hunters here, really. Well, guns are different than skinning the animal. Well, that's true. But now that I've done it a couple times, I think I could do it. I skin my deer with bullets. <laughs> with what? Bullets. Bullets. <laughs> that's what they do in Texas. They just skin them with bullets. Okay, guys, aim low and bang. Oh, dang it! Nick the gut. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that that's not fun. Anyways, so I went down <laughs> to to Kansas um, to hunt because meat is super expensive. And uh, it is super expensive. I forget. I think it's like five hundred bucks for a quarter cow. Exactly. And I think we spent. Um, I think it was maybe around eighty dollars, and we have two coolers of meat, and actually three coolers of meat came back with wow. us. So eighty dollars I mean, for three coolers of meat. Exactly. How many deer is that? Just two. Just two. Yeah. So my wife and I both got bucks this year. So that's it was, awesome. It was super fun. Did hunt. you get the antlers on the hung on the wall? No, you, you have to let them dry a little bit to, you know, because they're fresh. So you need to let them kind of cure over and then clean them up really nicely so they don't stink. You don't think that's barbaric, hanging animals' bone outer bones on the wall? Well, I mean, it is a little <laughs> bit, but um, it depends on your aspect. You it's know? a little bit, but I don't care. Now, you know, it's also respect to the animal that you killed, you know. Yeah. Well, one, we don't just kill for the antlers. That's just 
part of the fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you no, know, we just throw away the meat when we're done. Yeah, exactly. No, never understood those um, people. No, we actually process the deer completely ourselves. So it literally hits the ground. We pick it up. We we field dress it, and then we skin it, and then it goes right. You know, after a couple of days of hanging, it goes right into the the basement. And we start cutting it up, and so we're literally we're not wasting the deer, um, and it's feeding my family, and so. Do you feel like a total a total man now? Like a total... Because I would. I'd feel like a total... Like the man of my family, hardcore, like went out and shot it. I mean, Marty did it too, so she feels like the woman of her family. But you go out, kill a deer, dress it, and then you have meat for the next three well, to six months. Maybe if I did most of the, uh, the field dressing and skinning myself, yeah, maybe. But my father-in-law, <laughs> he, he's like, oh, hey, hey, you know, he just kind of... He just does it because he's been hunting for so many years. Yeah, he's been doing it for he's forever. so fast, and so I'm just like, hey, yeah, you go do it. Yeah, yep, well, I'll be moral support and sharpen your knife. No, I, I actually help, you know helped the deer and helped him and stuff, but still, it was just like I'm going to stay mostly out of the way and let you knock this sucker out. Now, how how do you skin a deer? How do you skin a deer? Because uh, let me explain why I asked. Uh, the way. I watched someone skin a hog was you nick the skin and then you put a uh, an air compressor <clears throat> nozzle in there and then blow it blow it to blow the skin away from the meat. So first and foremost, we'll just let everybody know who's slightly queasy that we're about to get in some fun facts here. Fun facts about skinning deer. Fun facts about skinning deer. So Fun fact number 1. Um so n- sen- that's not how you do a deer. Um so w- the way you do a deer is Ah, uh, basically you remove uh, the head. Yep. And then you... How do you remove the head? With a knife and a saw. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I'm trying not to go into super, super detail here. Uh, and then you remove um, the four legs up to the, up to the elbows, or what would be considered an <laughs> elbow on, on a human. That was not a good... <laughs> <laughs> on the elbows? Wouldn't they be considered knees? Yeah, we'll go in knees. <laughs> <laughs> I know my anatomy. He knows his deer anatomy. Um, and so you remove up to there, and then what you do is it's already been uh, all the internal organs and guts and everything have been removed. That's what now. Do you, I feel dressing? Do you just slit it open and then leave them there? Uh, no, you you find a place that's you know secluded, so that way you don't have just guts sitting out. That'd be gross around. Around hunting season, there's just piles of guts everywhere. Yeah. So most most hunters kind of find a spot that's secluded in a way, and then they dump everything there. Uh, a lot of times they do it, and like in Kansas, they do it in a position where they can actually shoot off of it. They don't see it, but they can shoot off of it because um, coyotes love deer remains. And so they'll actually come up and, and clean them out. Uh, so then what you do is you, you slit the back legs um, down, and then you just literally you start to peel it down. And then you just grab the carcass, you grab the the skin, and you can pretty much just rip it off because it's so the whole thing all at once. Yeah. Wow. It all comes. Do you have a deer skin rug now? Huh? Do you have a deer skin rug now? Uh, see, the thing about deer's um, hair is it actually will come out over time. That's lame. Well, yeah. So I mean, it's not fur. True, it, it's hair. It's hair. Um, and so it's although real quick, what's the definition between skin and or skin fur and hair? Because what my was always told is that hair will always keep growing, whereas fur stops growing at a certain length. I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I just have been always told that you know deer hair will fall out if yeah. you abuse it. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with like elk and other animals like that. But that's why pelts are so worth so much money because they're not gonna. They're like attached into the skin better, mm-hmm. and so they're not gonna come out. And speaking of fur, I actually saw my probably my first bobcat up close while oh, I was wow. there. That sounds scary. It, no, it wasn't. There. Wait, wait, bobcat. I was thinking cougar for some reason. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm glad it was not a cougar. I would have shot it. Yeah, cougars are scary. Bobcats are not as scary. Yeah, they're not bad. They're, they're like, like as big as a small dog, aren't they? Yeah, that'd be a good way. Or a mancoon cat. A mancoon. Yeah, it's about like that. Okay. Except less friendly and without a tail, you know, a little stump tail. But anyway, so the one I saw, we were standing up on a draw, waiting for uh, Marty to push the deer up to us, and uh, pretty soon this, I, hear, I see this flash, and I look over in my scope, and he, there goes this bobcat down into this draw, and I'm like, oh, that was awesome, I got to see it, and then pretty soon I heard all this squeaking and noise, and I'm like, oh, I think he just killed something, 
And and sure enough, about five minutes later, out he comes with this draw, and he's got a pack rat, which is oh. which is you know pretty good size, and it's hanging out the side of his mouth, and he's just kind of cruising along, like oh yeah. I just brought dinner to my family. Exactly. So that was actually really cool um, to be able to see a bobcat and actually hear it take something down. It was pretty cool. Now, where were you guys in a blind or were you guys just on the ground? Or how, how do you hunt in Kansas? Um, it depends on, on how much available land you have. Um, but we did mainly um, deer stands. Okay. So... Uh, we you did, all had your own separate stand, or he just has one big one? Uh, he has multiple. He has several places he has set up. So, for instance, you know, I could be in one blind, and then uh, Marty doesn't like to hunt alone because she just loves people. Mm-hmm. I, I'm okay hunting alone. That's okay. Um, but she always went hunting with her dad or me, and so there's he has a double blind, and then he has a and then there's a box blind we we're allowed to use. Uh, and so she was always in those. So it's actually pretty interesting. The first day we get there, uh, we go hunting. And it's, it's morning, it's beautiful, it's raining, that part I didn't like. And they're like, okay, we're going to head up to the box blind, and uh, you can come with us if you want. I'm like, no, you know, that's kind of ruins our chances for getting multiple deer. So I'm like, I'm going to head over to this other one, and thankfully, Kev, my father-in-law, has lots of rain gear. And anyways, so here can, here comes sunrise. I'm like, okay, yeah, here we go. 15 minutes into sunrise, I hear a shot. I'm like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding Sure enough, my wife drops a 10-point buck oh my 15 gosh. minutes into the first day of our hunt. I'm like, yeah, that's nice, dear. <laughs> Good job. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you know, it is exciting because... So proud of you. <laughs> exactly. It is exciting, but it also is like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, but, I mean, she's always had kind of a lucky time of it when hunting. And then she's been doing it for a long time, too, so... She's been hunting with her dad for a very long time. So they, they really enjoy it. And I've kind of got the bug now. So I kind of want to start hunting here if I can. I've never been hunting. Someone was like, oh, so you don't like killing animals? You do realize your meat comes from the store and someone had to kill. I'm like, yes, I, I you don't need to settle down. <laughs> Just because I don't Just because I don't want to shoot a deer doesn't mean I'm upset about animals dying. Yeah. That was a horrible way of saying that, but you know. <laughs> James, being honest. Honest moments with James. So, <sighs> Excuse me. I, 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 <clears throat> have you seen the, the post where people are like, why do people have to go hunting? That's so barbaric. Why don't they just get meat from the store where no animals are harmed? <laughs> yeah, I've seen those. I'm pretty sure those are just memes now. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure there's just that one person that said it and it just spread. Kind of like the lady that called into the radio station and was like, the deer crossings. I'm like, why did you put those deer crossings up? I love that one. Oh my goodness, that one makes me laugh. That allows the deer to cross. Yeah, <laughs> this is why can't you put it in like suburban areas where there's not a lot of traffic? <laughs> it's like, well, ma'am. Um... They did. They tried explaining it to her, and she just wasn't getting it. It was well, it's fantastic. Like the lady, it's like the lady who goes to McDonald's and says, "How many nuggets are in a four piece nugget?" <laughs> You, then, then you shouldn't use multiplication. There's eight and halves. I mean, you're not wrong. Not wrong. So I just watched a Adam's Ru- Adam Ruins Everything. Oh my gosh, yes. And he had one about how tech companies are making it to where it's illegal to work on. Like, apparently, if you use a generic screen for an iPhone and you replace it, they can electronically turn off the digitizer so the touch screen doesn't work. That is ridiculous. And supposedly, like farm equipment, newer farm equipment that has all the tech in it, Mm -hmm. if something goes, there was a guy who lived with a loud beeping for over a year. Every 10 minutes it would beep because it needed something repaired. Wow. And it it was illegal, possibly with jail time, if he tried to fix it himself. That's ridiculous. And so it was a whole thing about how you don't own your own electronics. This is true, and it won't let you work on your own electronics unless you have a whatever it's specific, called. Specific. Either you have a specific part or the specific tools. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It's it makes sense, but it it's it's capitalism. It's totally capitalism. Yeah, that's true. So, but and so that's why people think capitalism is evil. But it's like, well, no. It's a business. It's just a big business, so it's yeah. mean. 
yeah, they're they're there to succeed and make money. Yeah. And honestly, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do this anyways. <laughs> you know, I know there's people out there that, that can work on their own vehicles and everything. And I'm, yeah. then there's me who's like, no. I always take it to, to trust the old Nick. Oh, Nick Stom. He's fantastic. He is. We're just name dropping this morning. Yeah, we like them in that. We do. So anyways, um, finishing up about Kansas. What else did you do while you were out there? Oh, Kansas. Over uh, there. Honestly, there? it's over and down. Mainly over. But mainly, honestly, we did mostly just hunting and then hanging out with the family. Uh, one day we went up, we went down to Wichita and we, we visited family down there. And I've got this amazing video of my twins bouncing on pink cows. Interesting. And, yeah. Uh, and were they rubbery or? Yeah, I'll have to show James this, this video here of my twins bouncing on on pink cows. And then I'll have to post it for you guys to see because it is pretty pretty stinking cute and funny so nailed it i saw a commercial for it and then caleb told me he was laughing hysterically at episode five yeah so we we watched the first season and it was it was it's stinking hilarious but they just came out with um their uh christmas, christmas their christmas seasonal and oh my gosh i haven't laughed this hard in a super long time it's like you know those cooking shows where everybody's like super serious and it's just kind of like this is kind of stupid. And they're just always ranting on people. No, this is like everybody's laughing at their mistakes. And then they like make these random jokes about them. And it's it's just really funny. It's clean. They don't discriminate against anybody. Almost anybody can be on the show. And so it's you, We fun. should be on the show. We should be on the show. That'd be actually really great. Two guys from Northwest Ohio who have zero baking experience <laughs> trying to bake something. It would And aren't really artistic either. No, we're more so, autistic. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah so it's definitely Anyways, explain what nailed it is for people who don't know okay so nailed it is a show a baking show where they grab random people that uh, random people send them videos and they grab them they bring them onto the show and they are supposed to bake um like cake pops or these fantastic cakes um created by professionals and they're supposed to recreate them within you know a half an hour to four to an hour and a half depending on the time and so they have to recreate these in this time frame. Uh, and so you can imagine these people who aren't professionals trying to cook these cakes within an hour and a half and make it look professional is amazing. And so then they have to have the big reveal. And when they open it, or, you oh, know, gosh. when they show it oh, to them, they, they have to be like, nailed it. And it's. <laughs> and I think it came from people make trying to make pinterest stuff totally yeah that's, and i think that's where they made the show from as this is the idea where it came from is people saying nailed it when they show their you know what they created and it's just not like what. if you if you type in nailed it um on google like nailed it cakes or nailed it baking yeah you get some re- like there's one it was it was a it was supposed to be sonic the hedgehog mm-hmm. and it looks like a demonic <laughs> a demonic porcupine <laughs> in the end Oh, it's just great. Or like they made one and like going in the oven, it looked really nice. Uh-huh. And then when they cooked it, everything like melted and Together. Looked, it oh, looked like a demon. No. Yeah, that was what this was. Um, I just watched episode five. That was probably the best one where I just laughed and laughed and couldn't stop. Um, but the one lady, she created this. Uh, they were supposed to be moving cookies, like toy cookies, so they could move and everything. But the one lady was supposed to make a doll and she made it and then... All the makeup and everything oh just goodness. drained down its face. Oh, my face. gosh. So it looked like the Joker? <laughs> it, no, it was worse. It looked like a little demon baby. <laughs> it was gosh. Just, it was kind of, they all walked over and they were all, like, freaking out. They're like, I don't like this thing. Yeah, and uh, Munches is his last name, the black dude who does, mm-hmm. like, voiceovers and stuff. He was there, and he was just like, he's like, this is a creepy baby doll. I don't even sure I want to eat it or something along those lines. It's just, they're just really funny. <laughs> Am I going to get possessed if I eat this? Yeah, so. This is about the end of the podcast, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Caleb, thanks for coming. Yeah, as always. And we will see you, we will see you, we'll, we'll listen, we'll <laughs> hear, we'll talk to you guys next week. We'll see you later. Yep. With no eyes, just our noses. Wait, what? What? We'll smell you later. We'll smell you later.